Hi students, let us now understand what is meant by radius of gyration which is represented by the symbol K. Now let us assume this is a rigid body which is having irregular shape and non-uniform distribution of masses of the particles. So the entire rigid body is having a total mass capital M and it is assumed to be made up of a individual point masses which are having different masses you see the particles are they are having different masses so first particles mass is m1 the second one m2 m3 and the fourth one is m4 and the distances of these particles from the axis of rotation they are respectively r1 r2 r3 and r4 so when the entire body turns about the, the given axis all these particles will contribute some opposition to the rotational motion of the rigid body that is called their individual moments of inertia okay now what is the expression for the moment of inertia of the rigid body we have studied mathematically it is a mass of the first particle into r1 square the square of the distance of the first particle like that then the second particle's moment of an inertia is m2 r2 square the third fourth and the last nth particle is mn r n square if you add the moment of inertia of each and every particle then that is sum will be equal to the net moment of inertia of the rigid body rotating about the axis okay so this can be written as a sigma sigma means summation of n number of terms and uh, this is m i r i square where i is running from 1 to n so this is the expression for the moment of inertia okay we have assumed uh, the masses of the particles uh, are different and we have got this equation in case if all the particles uh, have the same mass then it is called the uniform distribution of mass okay so if mass of the first particle m1 is equal to m2 is equal to up to mn we can replace the terms by m itself where m is the mass of all the particles which have the same mass then it is called uniform distribution of mass is it that so now moment of inertia will be equal to what m r1 square plus m r2 square up to last term is m into r n square so that all the particles have the same mass but still they are at a different distances or not so m can be taken as constant so this is now equal to m into okay r1 square plus r2 square etc up to r n square okay now i will multiply the numerator by the total number of particles n assuming n number of particles and also i will divide it again by n so that the value does not change so now i is equal to n times m i have multiplied by small n the total number of particles so that inside this bracket it is r1 square plus r2 square etc up to rn square whole divided by once again in the denominator n so i have introduced n in the numerator and also in the denominator so that the value of the terms do not change okay if n is the total number of particles and small m is the mass of one particle then naturally this product m into m must be equal to the total mass of the rigid body is it not that so this must be equal to one to the total mass of a rigid body so i can substitute m into small m is also equal to capital m therefore i is equal to capital m into this term you observe which is written inside the bracket the numerator is the sum of the squares of the distances of the particles 
divided by total number of particles. So it must be some average. It must be some average only. Is it not? We have taken the average of the square of the distance of the particles. So I can represent this bracketed term by k square. So this is a one very important expression. You have to remember all this. The same equation is rewritten in different form. N into M is equal to capital M and the bracketed quantity is equal to K square. So, K square what I have represented in place of which term I have substituted K square. K square must be equal to what? R1 square plus R2 square etc. up to Rn square. So, divided by M. And what must be K then equal to the square root of R1 square plus R2 square etc. up to Rn square whole divided by N. Yes sir. This K only is called as radius of gyration. So radius of gyration K is now equal to square root of R1 square up to Rn square added divided by m. Now, this k has to be defined, is it not? There are two possible ways to give the definition. One is mathematical definition. Straight you read what is written. What is k equal to? It is the square root of. Okay, inside the square root, what is the average of? Okay, average of what? The sum of the squares of the distances. The sum of the squares of the distances of whom the particles from where from the axis so radius of gyration is defined as the square root of okay the mean value of the square root of the mean value of the squares of the distances of the particles from the axis of rotation since it is a distance its unit must be what meter only is it not its unit is meter i will put it in the bracket meter and its dimensional formula is l okay what is the other definition that is also very important you can see here this entire rigid body is having a total mass is equal to m and its weight weight that is m into g where generally the weight of any body will be concentrated at a point called a center of gravity so I have taken here CG is the center of gravity. This is the point where the entire weight of the rigid body is uh, concentrated. From that center of gravity, from the center of gravity, you see the axis is separated by some distance. Can you all see? Yes, this distance. This is the shortest distance called as the perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance uh, between uh, the center of gravity and the axis of rotation only is called as the radius of gyration. So this is another possible definition. One definition is radius of gyration is defined as the square root of the mean value of the squares of the distances of the particles from the axis of rotation. Next, what is the other definition? This also is defined as uh, the perpendicular distance, that is the shortest distance. Okay. Perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. Perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. Okay. Up to what? To the point. To the point where the entire weight is concentrated where the entire weight is concentrated so what is the name of the point where the entire weight will be concentrated is the center of gravity okay so this is a, another definition for the radius of gyration now one example one example see here suppose if you take this is a rod uniform rod we have derived uh, if the axis of rotation is passing through the center center of gravity and also perpendicular to its length so it, it is perpendicular to its length suppose if it is rotating so mass is m and 
length is L. So we have derived we have derived an expression what uh, its moment of inertia is equal to m L square by 12. Is it not m L square by 12? So here if I express in this format m k square, leaving this term uh, m, what is remaining? L square divided by 12. Is it not? So k square must be equal to what L square by 12. So in this uh, k square is replaced by what L square by 12. Therefore, what is the radius of variation? Square root of uh, okay, square root of L square by 12. So this is equal to L by root of 12. Again, root of 12 you can split as 4 into 3. 4 into 3 can be written as what? 2 root 3. That is afterwards. But immediately, by comparing this equation, we can get that the radius of gyration for this rod rotating about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its length is equal to what? Its length L divided by square root of 12. Like that, all the objects what we have derived earlier for a ring, a circular ring, Okay, or a circular plate for any axis can be determined. So, my dear students, remember that radius of gyration is defined as the distance, the shortest distance or the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the point where the entire weight of the rigid body is concentrated. I hope you must have understood well. Fine.